Right, welcome back to a new episode of Testing the Tips, where I, as an average golfer, try some of the most popular tips that I've tried myself that have helped me in terms of my golf swing. And this one is a big one. It's a problem that no doubt every other average golfer has suffered with, and that's topping these things, fairway woods. And it's a major, major problem for everybody's game. The question is, how do we guarantee we never top a three wood again? be right down the middle, you know. <laughs> you want to see this? Literally split the fairway on. It's incredible. Oh my God. Normally this goes absolutely bad. They're just identical. So this week's test in the tips comes from Matt Fryer and don't forget this is my interpretation of that video and if you want more in-depth detail and Matt's full explanation on how to avoid topping your fairway woods I'll put the link in the description below and go and take a look and subscribe to Matt's channel. But back to today's problem and the problem lies with not just topping it, but perhaps getting it a little bit thin as well and ex I'll explain what at least my problem is. Right, so the main problem for me on a personal level is not so much topping fairway woods, that's not something I do, but I certainly get them off the bottom grooves and that means that we're coming close to topping them. I don't want to get any closer than that. But the issue is all about delivery, the way in which we deliver fairway woods. And again, going back to a video we did a few weeks ago about our lowest point within the swing, that arc, that low point that we're going to once again, we'll be looking at TrackMan to back up with data whether or not we can make a shift from hitting perhaps our lowest point of being behind the ball to perhaps after it because that's the key to make sure that we don't top the ball, we don't get it off the bottom grooves and we get it out the middle of the club face. Right, so the basic thing is about the way we deliver the club, like I just said. And don't forget this is from a fairway lie. This is not playing a fairway wood from the tee. So straight away in terms of ball position, they're suggesting that again, it's very much, it's not driver position, which is just inside your left heel, a little bit back from that. So between sort of center and your front heel, which again, I play that from that kind of position anyway. But then what happens is we swing back and we talk about, and I would have talked about sweeping a fairway wood off the top, clipping it off the top nice and clean almost swinging on the upswing if you like and the problem with that is like i said is that we take it back we leave, we're on our back heel and then we're sweeping upwards and what that means is effectively that our club is being delivered or our lowest point of our swing is being delivered just behind the ball and that explains that when we're on the way up it's our top in the ball because it's slightly on our upswing that's what causes us to top the ball in the first place so what we've got to do is we've got to shift the lowest point of our swing to not behind the ball but to in front of the ball and we've seen that with that iron tip that i did the other week and it was really really effective it changed significantly not only the kind of quality of strike the sound everything changed straight away so how do we do it that's the key so the tip involves two t pegs and what you've got is I'm going to put this ball onto the tee first of all, which is the rear of the two tees. What we're going to do, we put one tee in the ground, ball on it, a tee peg about two inches in front of that ball down our strike line. Ball out the way, and our aim is, is to address the ball, the, the rear tee if you like, address the rear tee as you normally would in your normal position. So like I said, just uh, inside that front heel. But what we're looking to do is we're looking to make contact with the tee peg we've put two inches in front. So the concentration is shifting our low point from behind the ball, which I'd normally deliver into here, to into the ball around there. And what that means, and you're seeing even just in that motion alone, it means I change, my chest sort of covers the ball, if you like, covers that follow through, and it almost feels like a bit of a downward blow. And I'm assured we don't produce a divot, the sole will slide, it's not like producing an iron as we again make contact after the ball, we'd be into the ground a little bit, it isn't going to do that. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is take some practice swings and try and hit that second tee peg. Well, that did really well. That was uh, that was one that should have been one I prepared earlier. So we we avoided that first tee peg. 
We struck the second seed peg and that was exactly what we want to do. But the question is, what happens when we try that and put a ball in substitute? So the ball goes in place, we'll shift the T. That T peg can come out. In fact, I think that T peg can stay in the ground. And we're now going to do exactly the same. But the, the effort is going to be all about hitting or concentrating our efforts on trying to hit that second T peg. Now we haven't got a camera behind the ball, but trust me, I wish you'd have just panned out a little bit and followed the ball line there. That's gone bullet straight. As you've seen, I probably did take a little bit of a divot. The, the, uh, the camera on focus will sort of pick that up. But we certainly shifted the T-peg and I would imagine it changed the lowest point of my swing to after. What I'm going to do though, as ever, I've already said that I'm going to use Trackman to demonstrate whether or not this tip works because we can all have a go at the driving range and hopefully we see visible differences. But what I'm going to do is go back and start to collect some data. I'm going to swing as I normally would do and then I'm going to adopt this method and see if we can see a shift changing my lowest point of the swing and then what impact that has on the overall distance, the strike pattern, the overall performance of me trying to not top a three wouldn't get the ultimate performance out of these fairway woods off the deck. Right, so the first thing I did was start collecting data with my normal sort of setup, my normal, like I said, yes, I would play that ball off my front foot. But again, what I noticed was with it in mind, don't get me wrong, that within a few shots, I already realized that I was probably in just behind the ball. A few of them were launching, perhaps just a little bit low. And I've often said before and about, I've commented when we've done reviews about how good golf clubs have got nowadays with concentrating on these sort of bottom two grooves because apparently that is again where we make a lot of contact with our fairway woods. So it's something I was aware that I did, but you'll see from this data in front of you now that my average um, uh, low point in my swing is very much behind the ball and that's something we needed to change. So I went on and did exactly what we've done outside as you see me hitting some shots now. We moved that T-peg in front. I had it in place as a visual and I hit the T-peg out of the ground pretty much every time. So for me, that was brilliant. I got into a groove and now it's back in here and trying out that exact same routine, but collecting data and seeing if we can do that with no T-peg. So for me, we're on the golf course. We've got no, we can't put a T-peg in the ground. We've got to either imagine some you know, uh, lines that we draw in our, uh, our head. We've got to either set up with something, a dot in front of it. In this case, I'm on the mat, the T-peg has come out and I'm using that as my low point and that's what I'm going to aim at. But for me, and again, not for everybody, for me, the big concentration was this. When I take my swing back, it was almost as if I made sure I kept my body weight not swaying all the way back kept it very much over the ball and then as I come back into the ball that concentration of trying to hit effectively down past the ball changed my low point it was all about my body and my chest almost kind of like I said smothering the ball a little bit and that's the only in my mind I'm not saying that would work for everybody but for me that was the thing was just trying to concentrate on shifting that weight it forced me off my right foot into my uh, left foot and it changed it significantly. And what I noticed was, and I'll try one with the camera on. You can hear again. I mean, honestly, um, I, I was really skeptical when we started this whole series out about sort of how um, good these tips would be and how much, whether or not they'd apply to certain individuals and so far we've tried i think this is the fourth episode we've done now and i've tried each of these tips and they've had a massive improvement on my own personal game and what i noticed straight away was the improvement of strike the improvement of sound just in the same way as we tried to avoid the two pence piece in the first video that we did for our iron striking it's the exact same principle and what you notice is a huge change in terms of the quality of strike piercing ball flight really zipping forward and i cannot speak highly enough of this tip it's as simple as that i'm going to carry on practicing that same routine and don't forget like i said that's my interpretation i'm by no means any kind of qualified pga um, instructor and i know that 
the whole point is me as an average golfer just like you trying out the tips my interpretation of them and some of these moves that i make might necessarily work for you it's just how i've interpreted or i've adopted that idea and put it into practice for me and like i said this is one that i would certainly give a try so go and check out matt fryer matt thank you for the tip fantastic in terms of uh, results that i've seen and you'll see now at the end i'll put up what happened to me in terms of my ball striking with the data i collected and what a difference it made in shifting that low point from behind the ball to in front of the ball massive massive difference right as ever if we're going to carry on doing these things i need your encouragement your enthusiasm for them so comments down below hit that like button if you're not subscribed already then please do so we'll put one of these a week out so that's it for this week and i'll see you or well, probably tomorrow night for another video it just won't be a tip video right i'm gonna have one more go Do you know what? If I can take that on the golf course, it's an absolute different shot altogether.